Automatic Transmission Clutch Pack, Design and Operation Explained. So we're going to look at how this Automatic Transmission Clutch Pack works. And it is hydraulically fed. We're going to use air today. There's a passageway over here on the side. I'm going to show you that in a moment. But there is a piston that sits down inside here. So this is not the piston that sits down here, but it's something similar where you have a flat surface. There's a spot for return springs here. There is an oil seal on the outer edge. There will be an oil seal that fits on the inner edge. And hydraulic pressure comes up from the bottom and will push this upwards. This would be an example of a retainer plate with a return spring set that would be used to return a piston back into the bore. So there's my retainer plate with a series of coil springs that could be used to return the piston back to the bore after the pressure has been relieved. So we'll take a closer look at this one here in half a minute. But first of all, we simply have a clutch pack that sits down inside here. And we operate that by putting hydraulic pressure into the passageway. And you see that move upwards. So there's our simple operation of the clutch pack. Now, what that's going to do for us is we're going to be able to connect this outer housing which rotates with a gear or component that sits on the inside and there's splines here. So that sits down in here just like this and it can turn independently of this housing. As soon as I put air into it here, it locks the two up so they can't turn independently but they can still turn together. So what does it mean in an automatic transmission clutch pack when we apply that hydraulic pressure and we lock this gear, this is an internal ring gear, to this housing? Well, this particular housing happens to be the input shaft where the power comes in from the torque converter into the automatic transmission. So what this simply means is that as I rotate this shaft, to bring power into the transmission. When I apply that hydraulic oil pressure to this clutch pack, it's going to connect that input rotation to this ring gear. And so this is going to be my power into my gear train for my automatic transmission that uses this design. So the purpose of this clutch pack is to connect both of those objects together so they rotate together. So the way a clutch pack looks, is there's a big snap ring right around the edge right here and you can see the opening right there and we're just going to take that snap ring out when you look at a snap ring you want to look at this side or this edge and compare it to the other side if they're the same then you can just put it in either way. Otherwise, it might be directional. Then you have a steel plate. Now, this one's actually called a pressure plate because the thickness is going to be thicker than the rest of them here. And this one's unique because it's got this lip on the outer edge. And if you look at the back side, it's completely smooth right here. So this goes in one way, and we have to pay attention to that. Then there's what's called the disc or the friction disc. So this has the internal splines on it with friction material on both sides. And you can see the numbering on this. And technically, when there's oil in here, the oil creates a barrier between these two surfaces. And you actually don't wear that off. You can have high mileage vehicles and still be able to read those numbers on there. Notice that the first one that came out has no splines on the inside, but it's tabbed on the outside. Those tabs fit into these cutaways or tabs on the outer housing. So this is just kind of alternating. Notice the next steel disc that comes out is much thinner. So these are called the steels. And then we have another friction. Now in most cases, these will just be alternating steel friction, steel friction. 
Occasionally you will see two steels together. And when you finally get down to the last steel, now we can see the piston right down inside here. Up underneath here is a series of coil springs that they will push the piston back down into the bore and then there's a snap ring right here that holds it all in place. So this is the snap ring that holds this retainer plate in and there's coil springs underneath there. Okay, so you can see that, but if I air it too hard, I could pop the piston up beyond its travel here and the seal will pop out. So let's quickly put this back together. So these steel discs, they rotate with the housing. These friction discs, they have the internal splines, and so they will actually go right on to this gear that was put in there earlier. And so this friction will rotate with this gear. And the steel parts rotate with the housing. And now we have to make sure to get the lip side up. And nothing more than a screwdriver in my hand is needed to be able to put this snap ring in. We'll catch one edge here. I'll hold it down as I carefully work it around with the screwdriver and my hand holding it in place as we work our way around until it snaps into place. Now, it's preferred that the gap is not where there's an opening here. So if I wanted to put this in correctly, I would need to move that around a little bit. So let me fix that real quick. Now you notice how the opening over here has got support on both sides of it. So that is the preferred way to put a snap ring in unless otherwise directed by the service manual. And once again, this gear would just go in and it would spline and engage with those discs. And you can watch it drop down. Every time I get it engaged with another gear, another disc, it will fall down a little bit further. Now when I know it's all the way down, listen. Here how solid that is. If it's not engaged properly, listen. So that needs to go down a little bit further. Once again, nice and solid. So we know it's down all the way. So let's take a look and see how this is operated. So we've got some oiling holes right down inside here. And this oil hole right here is what's going to feed this clutch pack. And there's a hole on two sides. And there's something called sealing rings, which are on each side of that hole. So there's our hole that the oil would go in. And these are sealing rings that are located on each side. And this happens to be a nylon, or actually a Teflon seal ring right in here. So these are my Teflon sealing rings. And this one has a what would they call a scarf cut to it. Some of them are butt cut. Some of them are designed with a hook on it. This is a scarf cut. And so I'm going to have one of these on each side of this oil passageway or hydraulic passageway. And it's kind of got a valley cut in there so that we're going to have that oil going to come in and it's going to seal. There's another one right in here. So we're going to bring our air into this passageway in order to operate this clutch back. Now these are not a 100% positive seal. There's a tiny bit of leakage that goes by that. So that's the reason when you put it back into this housing,
and then you put air in through the passageway here, you hear a little bit of hissing. Also, air is thinner than oil. So it's going to get by areas where you don't normally get oil by. So let's go ahead. So if you watch or, and listen, that's a little bit of that air sneaking by those seal rings right inside there.